much welcome, uh, dear colleagues. I uh, assume that you are all musicians and preferably uh, violinists, because that is <coughs> a violin workshop. Uh, can you see my uh, uh, screen or the, this uh, slide where it is reading child centered note notation? I start with the question that uh, how you teach uh, do you use reading or not? With other words, are you following the uh, Suzuki philosophy or the Kodai philosophy? Uh, Suzuki said that the, uh, the child's second mother tongue is the imitation. So we'll imitate, imitate, imitate. Kodai said that teach the child to read and then give the instrument because it will be uh, intellectual activity if the child uh, sense the logic is there. The more sense uh, you are learning something with more sense, so not solely, merely uh, imitation, the, the message and the experience will be deeper and longer lasting. I was trained in Hungary, so I thought always that reading is very important. And when I took the courses with Professor Suzuki himself, two times actually, once in Japan and once in Finland, then uh, afterwards I thought that I can make a bridge between the two ideas. If I am not giving uh, reading, the children cannot play uh, uh, chamber music. If the children are playing without uh, note notation, uh, only imitation, then it is usually unison playing. If you teach the children reading, then the chamber music and orchestra music, the social activity of the uh, uh, playing is emphasized. But Suzuki was 100% uh, right that why uh, he used this sentence, why to burden the children with the musical grammar. And he was right. So then I thought that how can I make the musical grammar, so five line system, clef, sharps, flats, time signature, key signature, how can I simplify it and how can I really go with the line of the Kodai philosophy, changing and making the reading enjoyable and child-centered. So this will be here. I used colored. And if you now just imagine, uh, no matter what instrument you play, that your first uh, page of your violin book or cello book or piano book, how many information you had in the first uh, page. And the teacher said that, no, no, I will uh, explain it later on. I try to avoid and I give only this. This is then the instrument. This is the G string, G string, D string, A string, E string. That is immediately giving a picture that this is deep and this is high. And this is between mother and father. So, and so the instrument is here for the child. And then the child can play it with left, left hand pizzicato and immediately the child can use all the fingers because I say that, look, at we have four strings here. You have four fingers. Use for the deep, the, your deepest finger, the first finger for the D string, second finger for the D string, third finger for the A string, and fourth finger for the uh, E string, the little finger. So immediately then, all the fingers are starting to work uh, when the children are doing, and without the bow, you imitate the movement. So then, and the teacher is helping. Then, next one, <clears throat> this the features really were helping the pitch. It, uh, if you put here G, D, A, E, or you say uh, Sol, Re, La, Mi, it doesn't give any information for the child. One is uh, 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 just letters, but that gives pitch uh, information. And then uh, you go further, and this is the, str uh, the strings here. Now, just to tell you that these colors are scientifically proved. Color 
and sound pitch has relationship because both are having a vibration. And the green and the G has a relationship between the, uh, because of the vibrations. And the D, uh, it is uh, orangish, reddish, blue A has, with the, uh, the blue and A has relationship and E and uh, yellow. So it is not just at random, uh, uh, I put uh, the four, four colors. Uh, when this, uh, when the publisher uh, said that no, no, this is usually in uh, in the style, in the mode uh, uh, they want to have. The, this is red, and the boys are uh, blue. I said that no, we cannot change because that is the uh, scientifically proved. So. <clears throat> The children are learning the colors and uh, they associate it with the string in, in one week time or two weeks time. So I am teaching with this method now uh, for 50 years. This is quite a long spell and uh, the, it is really child centered and easy. Now, <clears throat> I visualized the note notation. If you put here a, a normal crochet quarter note, it does not give any information again, but this is, it gives, see, it gives, it gives the length. You feel it, you don't call it crochet, but do you feel it that is a third finger and the second finger and the second finger and the first finger and the first finger. So this, this will be later on the crochet. And I always, the high is here, middle, low, and the lowest pitch always at the beginning, at the bottom of the page. So it is visually helping. And now that is the value. I don't use uh, now for, the, for half a year these uh, uh, names that quarter note, eight note, 16 note, because for the child logic, a 16 and a 30 second note must be much bigger than an eight note and the half note should be very small so uh, now i visualize these things and this visuality will help the children's reading now <clears throat> uh, when i introduce the crochet crochet then the eighth note and the children will see and it is working functionally so again now two rhythms and the children, they would really understand that this is long and this is short. So they are plucking it and uh, you uh, gradually introduce the bow. You are helping the child to use the bow. That is <clears throat> very easy and can be used with any instrument. Actually, my violin book is translated into cello, uh, viola, double bass, piano, trumpet, clarinet, uh, so it is actually a guitar for many, many instruments, the basic they have adopted. So that is now rhythm exercises and somehow the child learns now the two basic rhythms, crochet and eighth note. Then gradually the crochets after two weeks, three weeks time, I change into the almost traditional note notation. So that is, this is a so-called pipe notation and then the eight notes I change to the traditional eight note gradually many I will use many pages with this visual light rhythm and you can see that it is the in the uh, uh, violin book is number five page five and that will be eight and this is already 13 and then comes the pause Again, the pause, we should teach the children, this is not silence, it is an active silence. So here, this is a coming from uh, the kindergarten, Mr. Sun song. Da, da, da. I say to the children that now, blow away the cloud from the sun. So it is an active participation, that is important. Or uh, here then, this one, yeah, ba, 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 ba blow out the candle uh, active participation in music making so the pause then i teach the rhythms now you can see that uh, the notes are in the space but always the high is here at the uh, 
upper part of the uh, page and the lowest is always at the bottom of the page. These little exercises are not at uh, my compositions, they are coming from kindergarten, uh, so they are children's songs and we have a duettini book where, where the children can immediately play duos with these rhythms, beautiful duos. In a one hour lesson we cannot show those. So beautiful duettinis and the second violin be played by the teacher or by an adult and the child is plucking or using uh, the bow. Beautiful little uh, exercises, uh, concert pieces, small concert pieces. Then comes the one and two line system. I tell the children after half a year, something like half a year that we were in this system. And then the children, I tell the children that now in Finland, this is November, December, it raining notes who were until now living in the space, they go to a house. So the house, the children are playing it. You can see that now the, the pipe notation, the pipe notation, it is like a pipe. The e, and why we use this pipe notation? Because it is easy to imitate. So uh, the children can write their own uh, little improvised melodies. And here the pipe notation is having already a head, a note head and a stem. And then I say to the children, but in music land, we are not putting the chimneys, the uh, windows, uh, just using the line. And this is the line and still the G will be always down and the E will be up and middle A and B. So that is the one line system where the children are playing only open strings. This is now, uh, we are expecting that they can use the bow themselves. And then really, I dare to say that beautiful duos you can uh, find uh, uh, with this. The child is playing only open string, open string, easy. It is not a burden to read these lines at all. And then the teacher is playing a <clears throat> more demanding piece. And then we will have another book, which is even has a sonatini piano accompaniment. So these are the, I am at the end of the first violin book. These are performing pieces. So when the children are plucking or playing uh, with these open string exercises, arco or pizzicato, we have duo arrangements with this and we have piano accompaniment arrangements with this. <clears throat> Why I say so? Because the whole color string is a very social and chamber music-like approach. So the chamber music is introduced from the uh, 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 third or fourth lesson when the child can hold the violin already. Then you can see that we are putting the fingers into action and the child will sing. Uh, we, we use the relative solmization. So uh, if you are an Italian, then it is for you re. Uh, and probably you all know that uh, our world is divided. One is using relative solmization where the door is moving, the door is everywhere. And the other one, which are the French and the French culture, how they, uh, those countries which were followed the French culture, they are using the fixed do system, the do is C. And then for these people, this is rare. Sing at first, play. Sing at first, play. Sing and play. And this is very important that you sing at first, and then play. That is easy because it is open string. Sing now the, ma magi uh, the major second. It can be do, re, or re, mi, uh, or d, e, but it is very likely that the child will not put on the right place the, the, the first finger, but it's very likely because he, she was singing on pitch will correct the intonation. This is the first page where we make the children to listen themselves. And this listening is coming 
uh, with the singing activity. So if you start with this page and really you take the pain that you are uh, uh, singing with the child, then the child's finger will be led by the ear and not led by the eyes. I do say that this is a very dangerous help for the children to put any visual help uh, on the fingerboard. Please, dear, dear, dear colleagues, if you do this, it is not a criticism. I understand if you have 20 children, then you put there. But please consider, if you have this, the children will look at the intonation and not listen the intonation. And the intonation is not a visual thing, it is an auditory. You have to connect the intonation with the ear and not with the eyes. So uh, that is really very dangerous, actually. And this is more dangerous if you use it through the whole fingerboard. If you cannot avoid using a visual help, just put a small dot, like Roland had it, a small uh, between the D and A string, a small little uh, white or red, he used red dot. It is better because it is not exact. When you put this, then actually you are a guitar player and not a violinist. So that is, uh, <clears throat> once more I repeat, not a, uh, not a critique because I <clears throat> understand if you have a lot of children. In our system, uh, group teaching means five children where the teacher has an easy access to every student, every pupil, to, uh, to change and to improve the um, holding, hold, bow hold on the violin board. The setup, to set up the child, uh, should happen already before book B. This is already book B until uh, this earlier page is what I used, uh, no, uh, this earlier page is, that was book A. And when I am using now the first line, this is book B. In book A, I was not using intonation. I was giving for the children a lot of chamber music, a piano accompaniment or duo. Book B starts with the intonation. And like traditionally, we use the first finger. Then look at here, that is E, E, F sharp. Uh, I put here the sharps, this will be later on sharp because this is F sharp, Fis. So I, I am never against the, um, I'm not teaching the note notation against the traditional. So there is no uh, uh, contradiction. I am following actually like it was in the music history, the, uh, reading because in music history uh, the notes were at the beginning you if you remember Gregorian just a line a melody line above the text then was coming the one line then two lines four lines and five lines I do the same so here open string first finger open string first finger open string first finger open string first finger there is this is no burden 84 or 83, uh, Professor Suzuki was coming uh, to Finland to give in Kerava uh, <coughs> a workshop, a master class. And then I had the opportunity to take him home uh, uh, with a, a taxi back to Helsinki. And I was a young man and sitting with him in the, the same taxi. I dared to show, uh, uh, it was already published, this book then. And he said to me, uh, Probably you solved the problem. Uh, whether he was really uh, polite or really he meant it, he was then uh, well over 80 years old, but he was really positive with this book. And I think so that he really meant that I solved the problem, that I could take away the difficult grammar, the burden of the difficult grammar. Because children are really, they have no problem with this uh, reading, opening first finger. Then rhythm with this open sing da da di da da so it's easy. You all, I believe, if you would have never played the violin, you would play it easily already. Open sing first finger, first finger open sing. So da da di da da di da di da di da da di da di da di da di da. 
these are not illustration. In my book, we have no illustration. It is giving, suggesting, uh, uh, how to say, character. This would be a Vivace, this would be a Parlando, this would be a Giusto, uh, and this would be a Largo or Grave. So these exercises, actually they are not exercises, all are children's songs. They are all independent exercises. Uh, I use uh, so French people, Venezuelan people, for you that is uh, uh, difficult because here uh, for German, English, uh, we have no problem because my do is now G, my do is here D, my do is here A, and my do is here E. But for uh, Italian, uh, you have a your soul is do, your re is do, your la is do, that is disturbing. And I realized that this is disturbing for those teachers who has developed a very strong uh, absolute pitch for them to use for the same pitch different names. That is very, dis might be very disturbing. But please know, dear colleagues, that the children, they are not disturbed at all. They later on will learn the absolute pitch with do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. Like we use the C, D, E, F, G later, not an early stage. But the beginning, the movable do will help the children enormously. <clears throat> and uh, I do uh, workshops before the uh, virus. I was in every year in Italy or, or uh, uh, Spain or uh, uh, France. So uh, there are um, uh, people are understanding the advantage of this. Now, the second finger is coming. We are still in the first line system. So I am singing for with the child do. Playing do, re, playing re, playing, and if it is not matching the st the singing uh, uh, pitch, then I am correcting it, and the child herself himself will practice at home with this expectation, match the singing pitch with the played pitch, and that is very very important because we are teaching children for a month or years. And they are not listening themselves. But when you connect at an early stage the playing with the singing, then it is easy. When I teach a new pitch, I always use it on the D string because the D string is the one which is singable for boys, girls uh, at the same time. Then, uh, when just here, then, then this is the, then do, this is re, and this is me. And because this will be when we arrive to the traditional teaching uh, uh, will be a f sharp i put here the letter the letter will be the, the sharp later on then <clears throat> you can see now that easy to read because open string first finger second finger open string that's all 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 so it's very easy uh, that is g sharp f sharp c sharp f sharp the teddy bear does not need it because it's a huge and big. This is my explanation, if a child would ask. But usually, boys would ask. It's interesting. Uh, girls are very, very um, dear. They, they don't ask, but boys sometimes ask that. Why do we have this here, that, and then? And then I, I cannot give a proper explanation that this will be F sharp, G sharp. But I would say that, well, this is so weak, we have to put here a ladder to put it high enough so that I explain it away. <clears throat> Look at now Suzuki, Professor Suzuki. Uh, why to burden the child with the difficult grammar? Note notation is a, a grammar. But key signature is a big, big difficulty as an ocean. Look how I prepare. Earlier, I put always, when there is the C sharp, for both the sharps, the letters. Here, I said, if a child would ask, why we have not here the third? I say that, look here, we have a preparatory exercise. This is open string. This is first finger, this is second finger. Here we have the sharp, the leather. I use the word leather, which is very near to the sharp. It does the same function. And this leather will be borrowed by this. And that is the preparation for a very difficult grammar key signature. 
And that I really, I say to you that it's, I brought this difficult notion of key signature into a sphere of the child's understanding. Here, I don't need to put, like here, I was putting both because there is no key signature here. So I put for both uh, F sharps. Here, I have all, but look, here, I don't need it anymore. So more uh, because it is here. So that will be borrowed by this second finger, by this second finger, by this second finger. Hopefully you agree that this is easy to play second finger, first finger, open string, second finger, first finger, open string. So that is uh, easy. Uh, then two line system. We go to the two line system to introduce the third finger. And then we are in a tetra chord, a four note notation, four note melodies are coming, and the same do, playing do, re, playing re, and correcting if it is not on pitch me, and correcting if it is not on pitch and fa. The semitone is always difficult. Dear um, Italian, French, uh, Venezuelan participants, if you are here, please remember. Originally, Arezzo Guido in 800-900, so 2000 years ago, when he invented this uh, syllabus, which actually were Latin words, this was the reason he started to use the mi fa for se the semitone, because the e uh, consonant, mi, is always a high consonant, and the four, the A vowel is a deep one. It is enormously helping the intonation because for every child in the world, it, the semitone is difficult to, in, uh, to imit, uh, uh, intonate. The singing mi fa mi fa is a big help. When you are uh, using the do re mi fa sol la ti do in the fixed system, then actually you lost this function, the E and the R, the E or I in English, uh, the, the, uh, the E, the high, mm, clear vowel and the deep brown, deep A, which helps the intonation. Uh, actually, uh, I can say that when a choir is trained through the movable door, then you can feel here that the intonation is better, I would say, than the norm uh, who are play, uh, uh, using only A, B, C, D. Because the overtones will come if you are using functionally uh, this uh, intonation. If you just think that do, re, mi, fa, so a dominant is a wonderful, really very sh uh, shining uh, pitch, fa, and subdominant is deep, and then do re mi fa sol la ti leading tone again, very helping the t leading tone high up, and then do tonic. So, but we are in the two line system, and uh, the children can sing and play uh, four note songs, and then uh, the repertoire is all is given and it's still easy. Do re mi fa 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 open sing first finger, second finger, third finger, uh, second finger. When I am not starting on open string, I always give an explanatory or preparatory exercise, which always starts on open string, consists all the notes, key signature is there, and ends with the same note where the piece will start. This is not illustration, it is talking about a farmer, the song. In the teacher's book, we, are, we give the, the, the words, and words are nice for five, six, seven years old children, but for say, seven, eight already you don't need, so we did not put here those name, names. This is about a, a, a stalk, so then uh, it gives you uh, somehow, in the, uh, how to say, a hint that how, uh, what is the character. I tried to create a book 
which has very few, uh, the, there is no moderato, allegretto. No, the, the, it's a, a clear book where the, only the, uh, the information which is needed for the child. Then two-line system and we arrived now to the open thing, first finger, second finger, third finger, fourth finger. So this is pentaphor. And the children are very nicely can play in five note songs. So that it is, this is a Finnish song uh, that uh, a sauna, that the teddy bear is going to the sauna, the father, the mother and the girl. And then this is then you can probably see that now gradually I introduce the time signature. This is four beats, four crotchets are in one bar. That is the idea here. And then two-line system plays on the state. How I go further? I introduce now uh, second year probably or second and half year that I will say that the, uh, the notes are going to the five-story building until they were only a two-story building. Uh, I'll try to come back. Uh, you see it's two-story building. Earlier a one-story building. Now they are in a five-story building, and you can see that only father and mother, they occupy the five line. It goes to the cellar, the cellar, needs ledger line, goes to the attic, needs ledger lines. So I introduce now the ledger lines here, the ledger lines. And that is important that I am not using now uh, immediately the five lines, but I put still the two lines. When the children are playing on these things, I help them with the uh, red two lines. So they can see that, aha, the these thing occupies in this five-story building, the stave system, the lower part. The mother string is occupying the higher one. So it's actually, if you look at it, it is not a big change from the two-line system. Only the E string is more difficult, but then there is no problem with this reading. The <clears throat> occasional reading mistakes are coming with on the G string only. You can see that earlier, this was always at the top of the page, and that was second, and then the D string, and then the, at the bottom the G string. Now, because I use the stave system, I mix it. Now the stave shows the pitch. Uh, divided stave. A later stage, I am <clears throat> even dividing the stave, uh, stave with the middle blue line because the usual mistakes are between second finger and open string. That is everywhere for every teacher experiences. So it does not um, eliminate reading difficulties but diminishes it. It is quite clear that my children will play it without problem, second finger open string. So you can see that this already book C, so now we are already in the third year when the children are playing from these notes. Uh, but that was a very, very gradual uh, improvement. And probably here there might be mistakes. They are usually mixing first finger and third finger. Uh, that this is a usual mistake for children, or uh, fourth finger and second finger, yeah. but not so much. So we, we have we, in this last 50 years we had very encouraging experiences with this child-centered note notation. <clears throat> then you can see repertoire, repertoire with the children, easy to read, beautiful repertoire is now given for them. We are already in the pentatonic scale with the children. Then comes the black notes. This is usually the end of third year that the black notes are coming. Uh, <clears throat> we still use the key uh, and the key signature, for a sort of key signature uh, with colors. We use the occasional uh, fingerings with colors, but the note notation are now traditional, standard, and when we have, this is already in a minor, when we have a semitone, 
we visualize it with this at the beginning. This is the first page when we are using minor songs. So here the, the that is actually a new finger pattern for the children. It is visually helping. Hopefully you don't think so that this is disturbing. Then <clears throat> uh, the dividing line, which was blue, it is changing into black. And if you can see, if you would compare these lines, uh, they are now almost proper black. When we started to use the five lines, uh, with the computer could make it that it was almost gray only. And in every 15, 17 page, we put a little bit more color into it, black color. And when we arrived here now, this is book uh, uh, D already, uh, then it is almost proper standard notation. And then we arrive to the standard notation where actually standard I use the key signature is a colored the, the clef is colored fingerings colored but the notes are and the, the five line is there and I the, dare to tell you uh, not exaggerating that uh, we did not uh, eliminate reading difficulties but enormously diminished it and the children are very good readers now why this reading i go back what i was starting that why the reading is important is that if you imitate it is fantastic and you will have a very fast uh, development but could i said that the good teaching is the one which makes always a equilibrium harmony balance between technical development, mental, logical de development, ear training development, and emotional development. This was for me a sort of advice which I tried to follow in the Ukhanistic system. So that was now what you could see uh, the, <coughs> the <coughs> greeting. And if I just show you now that where I was starting, uh, then those who were uh, coming late, that it started from here. And then it went one, that was the crochet, that was the eight notes. Then this is gradually were coming the note notation. This was a, and then the end we were coming through one line system, two line system, two line system. Then the five line system was introduced and then it, the two line were placed on the, can you see that how gray this, not so black yet. And then we did the divided with the blue line to help the upper part of the stave, lower part of the stave. And then later on the black notes were coming, still we used the blue line here then it changed to the black line. This is almost standard. And then this is standard notation. And in two and a half, three years time, the children are very good at reading and that what is important that they can uh, play in a chamber orchestra. And now short times still, I just show you that how I am, what I am do, doing with the rhythms, how I make the rhythms child centered and to understand how I would fulfill Suzuki's idea that don't burden the child with the grammar. Instead of using crochet eight notes or a quarter note, an eight note and half note, which is against the logic of the child, I am using speeds, speeds. That is auto speed. It is two times faster. And this is very slow. This is the minimum. Then we have the rhythm exercises and the rhythm exercises are connected with the dual playing. Um, excuse me uh, to interrupt. Uh, Elisabetta, uh, I can't see if there is something you are sharing. I can't see it on my screen right now. I'm sorry to interrupt. Uh, yeah, I see, actually, I see the screen. Uh, I see Giza's screen. 
Okay, because I don't see it now. Well, is it normal? <laughs> is everybody having the same issue? I'm seeing just a screen also. Okay, then I have something in my options. Sorry. No, okay. Problem. Then just keep on going. Okay, maybe Verna, just try to go out and uh, I will let you in again and maybe okay. it goes better. Okay. Okay. Verna, Verna, yes. uh, uh, please come in. Uh, 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 you are the one who invited me. We cannot leave you. you are down. Come in. So I'm, I'm in, I see you, but I don't see just the... You don't need to see me, you need, you need this because I wish... Okay, that so just a, just a minute, I'll go out and I'll come back. Uh, uh, while she's coming, I just tell you that uh, uh, these are uh, really, these duettinis are beautiful. And this is one thing that uh, uh, with this, uh, I experienced that with our children, there are very few who will stop playing the violin. Because usually children who are starting five, six, seven, a big majority, unfortunately, finishes playing the violin when they are turning 12, 13. But because our children are playing chamber music from the beginning, uh, it motivates them, it creates them a social uh, a circle, and these beautiful pieces with the duettini really are helping. So now, Verna is not yet with us. Uh, we wait a little bit. It's not a big delay, the, the other. Yeah, yeah I, I see <laughs> you now. Okay. Is and she here now? Yes. Is she oh, good, very good. So this is now the duettino, and these duettinis are really nice, and therefore just we have put here the, look at this one, for instance. It, the child is playing only G string, and wonderful music is coming here. So it's, uh, and you can see it's not only uh, for the teacher, but a child who played already two, uh, two years can very easily play uh, in first position. A teacher will do wonderful glissandos. So they are uh, really good pieces. Then uh, this, this is important, dear friends, that how to explain to the children the relationship uh, between the values. That is the problem with the children. Now, you do this, that, you put the children that they are plucking the E string. This will be E string, E string, E string. And then at first they say that. Understandable that now I created a relationship between the child is plucking the E string with the left hand pizzicato and the same time saying the new, the other rhythm. After a while, gets the bow and playing. So you connect it. Then you say that, dear girl or boy, the conductor is not always the beating crochets. It can be. Then, while you are doing this beat, the eighth note beat, please say the crochet. Ta, ta. Ta, ta, and then make it be understandable. Friends, it is because we violinists, we were not taught in this way, but pianists are taught in this way. And our violinists are not more clumsy than the pianist. A pianist easily can do both uh, difficult rhythms. Why we cannot do this? So it's not a problem. This one here. Uh, first look at them, ta rest, ta rest, ta rest, ta wonderful, the child will feel, aha, the rest has the same length than the crochet. So these are making uh, in a child-centered way to understand the values, how the values are fitting each other. A big problem when you are playing with small children chamber music, when you have a pause, remember there are two titties there. So please, <clears throat> I accept uh, that this workshop is not uh, uh, asking you that to use color sync, no, but remember what, whatever method you are using, if you are a string player, use this, a higher string, Pizzicato and the lower string arco uh, for the braccia, then A string and C string and the cello the same double bass. 
connect the pizzicato arco, connect and match the rhythms in this way, and the children will understand, aha, one crochet is two eight notes, one crochet is the same than four. So the values are here to visualize. Uh, this, the same applies here. Look at them. Uh, then, ta I don't need to teach this, that this is a dear child, this is ta one, two, never use this one, two. I am just then. So it is so easy. Or the next one, which is really difficult for the children, when you a, a child has a, a play this and the other part is playing this one, uh, then play and yap. So, dear colleagues, uh, that is uh, something practical advice that you use this one. And then uh, later on, for instance, when I am uh, uh, leading a child orchestra, they are nine, ten years old, and there is a piece a la breve. This is difficult because the children always they think so that the conductor is beating this one. No, no, sometimes the beat is that is the alla breve. They will understand now the alla breve and then they can say that ta 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 rest ta ti 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 ta. So that is a preparation for the alla breve. And all these little things uh, I already smuggle in, uh, in to the child at the early stage. So these children will learn a lot of things uh, uh, before really uh, they are going to a symphony orchestra. Uh, this is a new speed, that is the dotted half note. Instead of saying that one, two, three, no, when the child is playing this one, I ask them then, the, ta, 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 ta. connect it now with the titties. So I ask the child to play the D and recycle, say the Ta's. Play this and say the titties. Play this and say the minim and this one. And here they will understand this with the seesaw that it is equal with. So that is, now we have this so that uh, when I am teaching a new rhythm like this is here, the dotted half note, then all the time plucking play crochets, plucking play eight notes, plucking a this one, plucking. Every new rhythm is always connected with the beat. This is a ostinato beat. Uh, this one, look at. Okay, sorry, sorry, uh, I. I think, excuse me, we are getting to the end with our time. We have um, only six minutes left. So um, how much material do we have? Uh, if, you grant, if you grant me one minute, I think so you will profit of it. That Definitely, <laughs> I'm sure. Uh, this is very difficult to explain the children the dot. That is for every teacher. You cannot say to a seven years old child that the dot, the dot is the value of the half of this previous. But if you put the kangaroo, the child will feel, ah, this is stretching the rhythm. This is stretching the rhythm. So they will have a feeling what the, the dot is doing. And then I can it, it, it teach it very well with this. Then it will work and they learn it. So that was my uh, the minute what I asked you, and now this is actually what I have. This is the syncopated rhythm again. This is the Loch Ness. Mm -hmm. Again, I bring to the uh, imagination of the child. They will like to play the, uh, this one, and that is the end. And the snail is coming. This is the whole note, and then the aeroplane, sixteen notes, and then the uh, that is okay. You got a picture anyway, a reading and how I take away the burden of uh, musical grammar, with other words, reading.
Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, it was really, it went, the time went very fast and it's delightful to hear you explaining it. And uh, actually I had two questions. I, I'm sure there are others who have questions too, but then uh, as we have still a few moments, I, I wish to ask, uh, what are the age limits or preferences for you that could the most have the profit of this, uh, this system? There is no, uh, uh, everybody's child who starts with something. Mm. Uh, it, it, it is a basic thing. Uh, the difference is only if a, a 10 years old starts with this, the 10 years old will do this uh, in a, a year. And a, a six years old or five years old, two or three years. So it is only the speed how you teach. But uh, they probably I would not start violin teaching with a 11 years or 12 years old with a color thing because that time the child wants to be adult. And for this is for uh, uh, they think so that childish. Uh, and this book is a technical book and not childish, child, but for a 12 years old, childish. Uh, so if you think so, that then it can be a limit if a child wants to be an adult. But actually, I, I, I'm, I had five, six, seven, eight years. Nine is not late to start violin playing at all. 10 starts to be late, uh, but I could do it with the 10 years old too. And adults like it very much naturally. Uh, what I would not do definitely to teach three years old children, definitely not. I am teaching in China and I see that they are starting when they are three. Uh, I am a grandfather and a father. I would not teach a child when it is, uh, I would consider I take away the childhood. Violin playing is difficult. The, to put it into this unnatural position. If you are a father or a mother, don't tease the child with the violin. Give time to be a child. Five years is, the, I think so, the minimum. I start with children. I Sounds fair enough. Yes, I also have good experiences with um, adult beginners with this, this program. They, they just love it because they understand it in this playful way. I still had another question, and this concerns of the system of program in general, as there are some programs that start directly in orchestra. And um, how do you see, um, could it be adapt, uh, adapted to uh, collective teaching? Uh, I know, and I do very, very much deeply appreciate your work, <laughs> but uh, uh, when you are starting with the symphony orchestra, I, uh, I'm, please, not a criticism, the intonation is not the same than a string orchestra. If you start uh, the children to play socially together, use string orchestra at the beginning because the intonation will be fine and marry with the brass and the others at a later stage. String orchestra, string groups are the start I would advise to uh, the El Sistema, not symphony orchestra. And then naturally, when they are 14, 15, then you, you introduce. But at the beginning, because of the intonation, it is important, string intonation. That is my, you asked me, this is my honest answer. But we do, we do start, as, uh, especially in Finland, we start with string orchestras. Very good. And Thank in you. many places, that's the case anyway. Uh, that um, as far as I'm concerned and I know. Now I, I know that there are participants that need to leave. So uh, we are closing now. I thank you very warmly, Professor Silve, for your, your time. And um, I hope we will uh, be able to keep in touch with the other system of programs and, and your, your participation maybe to some other moment as well. Thank you. Uh, I am teaching and now I have a long uh, program with China, actually. And uh, this is the problem. I, I said uh, away one day, I said to them that this is now uh, for you, uh, but I'm tomorrow after tomorrow all the time be busy with the, with, uh, with the Chinese program every day, six hours. It's a long No, I, I thought of, of later, later coming, maybe but, next year or something uh, like that. Uh, um, I am very much sympathizing with this uh, whole system because this is social and uh, 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 music has this strong function socially. 
uh, help the children and that is um, actually my program is a little bit similar what you, in London there is a school where they are using it very similar like in East London is a little bit like the streets of Venezuela and they are using this system and they are working with them so I appreciate and thanks for this uh, invitation and okay thank you very much and so we'll keep in touch bye Thank <laughs> you.